Bluetooth speakers, perhaps one of the most boring things you can think to make a video about, which is why I don't tend to do it. I bought this one a few years ago. It annoys me every time I turn it on, it's flat. It seems to run its own battery down very quickly. I very rarely use a Bluetooth speaker, but recently I've had a need to have one in the house and I thought I'm going to get myself a decent one. So I looked at the reviews and everyone seems to rate the Bang & Olufsen a1 second generation. Now you can tell the second generation from the first on the pictures it seems to be this bit here this kind of thing that's on the what looks like a wrist strap. On the second gen you get this longer piece on the first gen you get like a circular thing so sometimes you'll see these and you think oh that's a good buy and then you realize you're paying for the first gen rather than the second. What's the difference? I don't really know it's just I know that all these get really good reviews and whether or not they've been paid off I don't know so let's find out see if I think they're any good. Now here's what it does according to the front it's a Bluetooth speaker rather surprisingly. Superior sound, IP67 waterproof voice assistant, Bluetooth 5.1. It also says now with Aptex Adaptive to create the ultimate wireless listening experience. As far as battery life goes, it says here provides up to 18 hours, which is pretty good. Now Bluetooth speakers you can get for next to nothing, the 10 a penny. Well, this one, it's certainly not that. In the UK, this retails for usually 230 to 240 pounds. I managed to pick this one up for 180 pounds, and I'll tell you later on in the video where I got it from and how I did that. Now, of course, with Bang & Olufsen, you're paying for the name, but often you're also paying for something that's good quality as well. I'm sure you can get cheaper speakers that are just as good a quality as this, so get one of those if you want. I wanted this one because it had got good reviews and I was intrigued at trying some Bang & Olufsen equipment. So let's have a look. Right, now that is a little bit bigger than I imagined it to be. I kind of imagined it more that size, so I'm quite glad about that. It should put out some good audio, that. Now they come in a variety of colours. I quite like the green one, but unfortunately the place that I could get it for this price from only stocks this black colour, but it's quite neat with the uh, irrelevant string coming out of the side. I mean, you've got to think, swinging around something that costs you 200 quid or thereabouts, yeah, you treat it a bit more carefully than that. Right, okay, so we've got touch controls on the side here. Never a fan of touch controls. I'd rather have something where I can see more easily where the button is and feel it with my finger. But what we've got here, we've got play, pause, volume up and down, power, Bluetooth connect and uh, microphone, which no doubt summons the voice assistant manually. It's kind of a slightly rubberized base, I think, that one. Hard to tell. Yeah, it is. And um, powers, well, charges from USB-C. I can see a little LED next to that as well. So let's just see what else we get inside this box. Instructions and uh, USB-C lead. Right. Decent length, I think, that one. Let's just get it unwrapped. Yeah, like a metre and a half, I think, that one. So let me just plug it in. We'll charge it up. OK, lights come on. Light on the top. Seems to have turned itself on now. So if that's going to start flashing, it looks like it wants to connect with something. So let me get my phone out here. Right, seems to be connected. Let's try playing some music. The thing that I've heard about this is that it's got really good quality bass. So let's find out. Oh yeah, you can feel that, that's good. Yeah, properly vibrates that. This is what I was saying recently about uh, big old boom boxes. I had that massive shark with a record player in it and I said it doesn't have the bass that you'd expect it to have given its size because we've become accustomed to small devices like this now being able to put out really high quality but solid bass. Whereas those old devices, you just didn't have the technology. I'm sure it's down to neodymium magnets and goodness knows what else. Advances in technology in recent years. But yeah, you see a big old boom box from the early 80s. You think, oh, that'll, that's going to blow your socks off. And then you find out it just goes loud, but you don't get that kind of feeling with it. Anyway, let's carry on. Let me have a listen to this. This track's a good one to test because I've tried it with some other speakers and they really have trouble with it, they go all warbly. This one's not having any issues. Let's turn it up a bit. Okay, now these aren't touch sensitive buttons, they're actually membrane buttons. 
they're flat on the surface, but when you push them, you can feel that you've pushed in a little membrane button underneath. Okay, now in the quick start guide, it shows that you can download an app for this. What that could do, I'm not too sure, because it does everything I need it to right now. I suppose it helps you to connect to the Amazon voice assistant, but perhaps it enables you to adjust the equalizations. Let's have a look. Oh dear, sign in or sign up. New software available, typical 74% battery. Listening modes, we can change. Optimal ambient party speech favorite. And then voice assistant on, and then we can connect two of them together as a stereo pair. So I suppose you can start off with one of these, and if you like it, get its other half. Okay, while the update's installing, I'll tell you how I managed to get this one at 180 quid instead of, say, 230. I think 230 is what Amazon's selling it for at the moment. But surprisingly, Urban Outfitters, you can see here, down at the bottom there, £200. Now, I don't know if they cocked up when they did the prices on these, because I don't think they were ever 200 and if they were, they've gone up since. But you just go on their website, and they're £200 there. So you think, all right, 200 how do you get it for 180 Well, as a new customer, you get a 10% off voucher in your email, so don't order it straight away. Wait for that email to come through. Use your voucher on your first order. 10% off makes it 180 quid delivered. Still expensive for a little Bluetooth speaker, but certainly better than 240 quid or whatever it costs at most places. Okay, now this update is taking longer than it anticipates. It's been saying about one minute left now for about five minutes. So it will hopefully eventually get to the end of the update and then I'll fully charge it and use it for a few days before I pass my judgment on it. So rather than just unboxing it and saying, yeah, it seems fine, I want to use it for a bit before I tell you any more. So we'll come back to this in a few days. Okay, a couple of days later now, I've been using the speaker quite a bit, so I've formed some opinions about it. And I've also found a really interesting little bug. But before we get to both of those things, I just want to go through the specs. So it uses Bluetooth 5.1. But within that, it's got codex. It uses the Aptex Adaptive and the AAC codex. So for an iPhone or whatever, you'd be using AAC. For other devices that use Aptex, Aptex Adaptive is one that I wasn't familiar with. So I had to look it up and I'm a bit out of date with this kind of stuff because apparently it's the replacement for Aptex HD. It's got better efficiency and it's got low latency built in as well. So if your device supports it, then that's a good thing, isn't it? As far as the speakers, I say speakers because you'd think it was just one in here, but no, there's a woofer and a tweeter, 30 watts a piece. The IP67 waterproof rating, well, that means that you can keep it submerged for one meter for 30 minutes. And also, one thing it didn't mention anywhere else, it's got multi-point pairing, which means that you can pair two devices at once, which is what I've got here. So at the moment, the iPad's connected up to it, playing Cuba Bion. And then, if I go to the phone, which is also paired up with it, and I can play something from the YouTube audio library, this is Jumping Boogie Woogie. So, of course, the most recent thing that you've played takes over, but they're both still paired to it, so you can just jump back and forth as easy as that. I like multi-point pairing. The Amazon Assistant, I'm not going to say the word in case it triggers anyone's assistance, the A word, of course, you can set that up through the app, and what it relies upon is that Bluetooth connection to your phone. So it's not like a normal Amazon Assistant speaker that's connected up over Wi-Fi and continuously connected. This, as long as you've got it connected up to your phone, you can say the A word, you can use it just as a normal Amazon Assistant, if that's what you wanted to do. You can expect clouds with a chance of showers. I've tested it, it works fine, but then I've switched it off and I've also got, you might be able to see the little red light on here perhaps, don't know. Um, that's me turning the microphone off. If you hold the mic button down, it'll turn the mic off. So it's not on at all there, but a red light comes on and it remembers that after you've powered it, after you've done a power cycle, it comes back on with the mic switched off, which is interesting. Now that gets me onto the little bug because it's to do with the microphones. Uh, let me just move a few things around here because I'll need to uh, get something set up to demonstrate this properly. Right, okay, so everything's set up now. The microphones, well, there's three inside it, and it says here in the specs, it says three microphone array for great call clarity. I wanted to see how good it was at picking up my voice, and uh, I run into this weird little bug, and to demonstrate it, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna record 
what I'm saying now, you can hear me, of course, perfectly clearly because I'm coming through this microphone, but I'm going to press record on here on the voice memo. So now it's recording a voice memo and I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to me so I'm not um, putting it at a disadvantage. And at the moment, my voice will be coming through on this really quite muffled. But if I pause like I just did then, it readjusts itself and it improves the sound quality. So I'm going to pause again. And now the sound quality should be a lot better than it was when I started. I'll just do one final pause for a couple of seconds. Right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to play this section back with the audio that I've recorded through this speaker overlaid on the video. So just watch this. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to me, so I'm not um, bring it at a disadvantage. And at the moment, my voice will be coming through on this really quite muffled. But if I pause like I just did then, it readjusts itself and it improves the sound quality. So I'm going to pause again. And now the sound quality should be a lot better than it was when I started. I'll just do one final pause for a couple of seconds. Right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to play this section back with the audio that I've recorded through this speaker overlaid on the video. Just thought I'd point that out. Not a deal breaker to me because I don't plan on making calls over this. I really only want to listen to music through it and I'm sure, I'm sure they can fix it with a, a firmware update. Okay, let me tell you what I don't like about this speaker, and it's down to Bang & Olufsen's tendency to do form over function sometimes. They, they do this on a lot of their equipment where it looks beautiful, but actual usability takes a step back from that. And on this one, it's to do with the buttons. Uh, they're all completely flat to the case until you push them, then you feel the indent on them. But there's, there's nothing to identify them with your finger, and they're hard to see. Maybe they're better on some colours than others, but on this one, very difficult to make out those symbols. And if you just have a normally lit room and you have this down on the table, you're looking for the power button and you're thinking, where's the power? And then you're picking it up and you're kind of doing this. It could have done with like the odd pimple here or there or something sticking out a little bit more just so you could identify things. Also, if you wanted to skip forward and back a track, you'd have to press the play pause button, which is that one there. So double tap to go forward a track, triple tap to go back. It'd just be easier if they did separate buttons for those functions, I think, form over function. The other issue is, of course, this is a sealed unit and it's going to fail, isn't it? I mean, it's got a rechargeable battery in here that has a certain uh, amount of life in it. And then after that, it's going to be pretty useless as a thing. Uh, bear in mind that these are supposed to cost about 240 quid. It's like a disposable £240 speaker. Yeah, in the short term, it's working fine. But, you know, thinking further out, I mean, I've got hi-fi equipment from the 1950s and 60s that's still working. This won't be working in 10 years, which is a bit of a shame because it's, it's quite a nice thing. In fact, let me go on now to the things that I like about this. The first one, I like the round shape of this. I mean, obviously, that's one of the reasons why I chose this. But the fact is the sound comes out of it equally in all directions. So rather than having a front and a back, you just pop it down and you can leave it on a table in the middle of the room, walk around the room and the volume, the equalization, nothing changes about the sound at all. It's just the same all the way around. Just a simple little thing, but it does make it a lot more usable than some Bluetooth speakers I've had in the past that if you just walk behind the thing, you can't really hear it very well. Now the strap, I was, uh, a bit dubious about this initially. It turns out it's a good idea because if you got this down on a counter and you want to pick it up without pressing any of those buttons on the side, well, you just pick it up from that and um, makes sense. Also, you know, it's had a coffee cup here before. That's something I noticed with this because I was walking from one room to another. I got the tablet, got the coffee in one hand, uh, got the music playing, you know, so I could put it down in a different location. And again, using the strap there. Without that, You'd have to, I suppose you could put your speaker on there and carry it around, but you know what I mean. It just makes it a little bit more convenient. And finally, the construction of it. It feels solid. It's got this nice rubberized base. I hope it's not one of those rubberized things that starts going sticky in time. Then again, it probably won't last long enough for that to happen, but it doesn't feel like that. It just feels nice and solid. And when you put it down because of the base in this, you don't want it vibrating around or rattling and it does hold it down to the counter. 
nice metal grill on the top thickish metal as well it's not like a, a normal speaker grill that you could dint it in this feels really very solid so yeah the build quality and the construction of this top notch <laughs> Most important thing, what's the sound quality like? Well, it's very good. And what's the point in buying a speaker that's got rubbish sound quality? I bought this one specifically, I paid the extra because I'd seen all these reviews saying that it had an excellent sound quality and I can't disagree with them at all. You can adjust the equalisation, there are different modes in that app where you can set the equalisation between a few different modes. It's like an old school tone control really, rather than separate bass and treble or a proper graphic equaliser. You just kind of rotate it between treble and bass and which one's being emphasised. I found though that the mode that it starts off in, which is called optimal, was optimal for me. So if you don't want to use the app, don't worry about it because it starts off in what I think is the best sound equalisation mode anyway. Now, as far as the overall volume of this thing, it does go loud enough. I'll turn it all the way up to the top there. However, at this volume, it gets a little bit harsh, just right at the top there. I find that the bass kind of runs out before the treble does. So you start off at a low volume, it sounds really nice, all the way up to mid, up to three quarters, everything sounds nice and well-rounded. And then that final quarter, it seems like the treble increases, but the bass has kind of run out. So it gets a little bit harsh. Uh, but then again, I wouldn't listen at that volume. I don't think this is the kind of thing where you're trying to fill a room with sound. I mean, you'd be daft to get something this size and then expect to be able to uh, fill, a, fill a warehouse with audio. No, this is the kind of thing that goes on the desk in front of your table or whatever, and you listen to this while you're doing something near it. You don't like wander off to the other end of the room and expect to be surrounded by sound. So yeah, for what it is, for the size it is, excellent sound quality can't fault it at all i don't know how they'll be able to get something of this size sounding any better than this you're feeling very sleepy you want to spend 180 pounds on a bluetooth speaker you probably don't and i don't blame you if you don't because most people wouldn't most people have already got a bluetooth speaker if they want one and if they do want a new one they're probably going to spend a lot less than this it's just I just wanted one and I thought I might as well get a good one and all the reviews said this had really good sound quality and they're not lying, it's excellent. The other issue is of course it is expensive isn't it? I mean 180 quid for a Bluetooth speaker I'm sure you could get the, the dozen for that almost. They won't be as good a quality but I mean I don't think you'd have to spend that amount to get a very similar quality to this but uh, now I've bought it I'm happy with it and again this thing should be 240 quid and it is at most places 230 at Amazon at the moment and I managed to get it for 180 so getting sort of 25% off I thought well not a bad deal might as well get it now while I can the only thing I'll say about this is that there's only uh, well Bluetooth speakers are boring aren't they the only thing more boring than a Bluetooth speaker is somebody making a video about a Bluetooth speaker and then the only thing more boring than that is someone making a video about a Bluetooth speaker that's been on the market for two years already and the only thing more boring than that is someone making a video about a Bluetooth speaker that's been on the market for two years already that costs 180 pounds so I've really nailed it with this one I'm not on affiliate commission just wanted to do a review of something that I got in and um, I know people say well that's too expensive I'm not going to buy one yeah don't don't tell me about it I'm not interested there's plenty of things I'm not going to buy I'm not going to buy a helicopter this week either don't need to tell everyone all about it you know, it's like telling people about your dreams isn't it not interested anyway there you go that was the bio sound uh, something a1 was it marked anyway you know what it was I'll put it on the screen you, anyway links in the video description for where I bought mine from in the UK you'll probably find it cheaper in, in other countries than I got it here but there you go that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching <laughs>